So today we start a brand new series. And we have a brand new cameraman. First the whisper, then the shout First the temple, then the doubt First the angel spreads the wings Shadow All right, land! Okay. Too bad it makes so much noise. It is very handy. So I've been debating whether I should or should I not tell what the project's going to be or make it a surprise. I can tell you it's going to include chainsaws, milling, big timbers, making boards out of those big timbers, literature, and one very, very happy woman. So, what do I, what do I have here? I've got, these are the remnants. These are the very first timbers that I ever milled back in the day, back in the old off-grid homestead. And as those of you who follow the channel, as I'm so fond of saying, may remember when I tried to put all these together, well, I had, they, had sit, sit, they had sat in storage for so long, they would no longer go. They had moved too much, too much twisting, too much movement, and so here we have it. So I have been saving them, not because I think I can build the cabin again, but because they're such nice, really nice Douglas fir. And I think that they're going to be perfect for the project. Unfortunately, it looks like the two we need are on the bottom. So this is going to be, this is going to be a really fun project. I forgot to mention also there's going to be a significant amount of blacksmithing involved and firing up the old wood fired forge. And we're going to take a trip into town, maybe tomorrow to the to a really fabulous steel yard. I think I'll just roll these over. A really fabulous steel yard, not too far from here, that has some neat stuff uh, that we're going to need as well. But today, we need to take these two beams, these big ones on the bottom, up to the shop. This, this is a big one here, this one here. Goodness, these are nice and dry too. That's 16 feet long and it's a, it's a, uh, what is that? It's a six by 10. That is a six by 10. There's another one, another six by 10, by 10. but that's not the one. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. Yeah, I don't know why they, they won't work. That's gonna be pretty heavy to carry. Oh yeah, we can get something out of that. Come on, no, stop. That's just too heavy for me to carry. I'm gonna have to go get the truck. things are just a little too heavy to pack. They're uh, 13 feet long and they're uh, six by uh, six by 12s I think or maybe six by tens. That's the beauty of old farm trucks. You don't worry about the paint so much. Good, so I need a tractor. <laughs> need a tractor. Ugh. And to go to the dump. What's the chance that I ride there? I think pretty good. I guess I might as well get the other one while I'm here too. Got my Western theme going on here today. Well, not because I 
feel like a cowboy, but it's just so, the sun came out, it's so hot. That straw hat, it really helps. First the whisper, then the shout First the temple, then the doubt First the angel spreads her wings and Shadow covers everything I want to tell you, but I don't know how Mouth the words, but they won't come out. I've been a liar, I've been alone, I've been a stranger in my own damn home. Ooh, that's heavy. All right, this is this is very heavy. This is going to be exciting. We're gonna make some. Oh, caught up. We're gonna make some boards today. Goodness, that's heavy. I can't believe it. I used to pack those things around when they were green. All by myself, I did all this. All right, let's see what we got. What we need today, it's got some splits in it. It's gonna have to be rustic. That's always tell myself when the wood's not very good, it's gonna be rustic. That makes me feel better about the whole thing. It's twisted. That's gonna just gonna have to be part of the charm. Just no way around it. Oh my goodness, look at the twist in that. Boy, that's lesson learned when you're timber framing. When you start doing your notches, you gotta go, man. You gotta commit if you're using green timber. I can't believe it. I mean, it is straight up cold today. I've got three shirts on. I had two shirts on. I came outside and it was so cold I went and put a wool shirt on, August 2nd. Amazing. All right, so what we need, we need Eight. We need eight full dimension two by tens. I think so. Is that what we have? Is this 10 or 12? Well, it was 10. It shrunk down a quarter. It's nine. I think it's still okay. I think it's okay. So we need uh, eight of those at 60 inches. So we've got 60. And oh, we got plenty. We got a foot left over. That's not a problem. So what do we, what, I guess, have I said what we're doing? We're gonna make, I think I did. We're gonna make some boards. We're gonna make boards out of timbers. What is a board, a board, and a timber, a timber? When is a ship, a ship, and a boat, a boat? Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe some of you guys in the Navy know this. I was always told that a ship is something that can't be loaded aboard another ship. So a boat is anything that can be loaded aboard another boat. Is that right? I don't know. So what is a timber a timber and a board a board? Well, again, I've always, how I've understood it is that I think six inches, six by sixes, anything in the six inch dimension is considered a timber and anything below that is considered a board. Could be wrong. There's always some guys that work in the lumber industry that know, so you can put in the comments. That just kind of was my think so. Okay, so what are we gonna use to make boards out of timbers? Well, not all of us have a pit saw or access to a pit saw. So for those of us who don't, then we can use a chainsaw mill. This is a Granberg Mark, Mark series chainsaw mill. I know this is repetitive for some of you, but I always have to remember that there's 500 new people a day joining us on the channel. So um, that may have not seen this before. So what, are, what I'm doing here, so this is just basically a jig. This may be review for some of you. Uh, this is just a jig that uh, you slide your chainsaw into that allows you to cut your own dimensional lumber from logs. And what I'm doing right now, so we see right there is just a series of graduated numbers. I'm down here at the two inches. So whatever we set the jig at is what the thickness of our board's gonna be. But something just dawned on me. Before we do that, we better double check and see how much we have. 
So we need boards from this, right? So obviously, you know, we can't use that section. That section is going to have to be gone. So we have to see what do we have remaining. So we have here, what's this thickness? This is going to be, so we're at four inches exactly. Now, if I cut these at two inches, we're going to have a problem. We're not going to be able to get two inches out of here. Well, why, you say? There's four there. Can you not get, just not two go into four twice? Well, the problem is we need to compensate for the thickness of the kerf, or the thickness of the chainsaw bar. So what's the thickness of the chainsaw chain and the chainsaw bar here? So the chainsaw chain, what's this kerf going to be? I'm going to, it's going to have to estimate it because this has got quite a bit set up. But I'm going to say, I'm going to say that this is going to be, I'd say it's quarter inch. I bet it's all of a quarter inch. So what we're going to have to do is account for that. So if I were just to set that guide at two inches, we would, yeah, first cut would be two inches, but the other one would be what? Well, it'd be an inch and three quarter, it'd be too thin. So we're going to need to, to sh sh uh, sharp shorten these to an eighth of an inch, by an eighth of an inch. So that means our boards are going to be one inch and seven eighths. So as you're probably gathering, chainsaw milling is, I mean, we're not talking about some, some precision work here. I mean, it's just kind of a, oh, you know, I mean, you could get pretty close though. I mean, I, I, my, it's my experience, I've been able to cut within an eighth of an inch, right? Okay, so what we got there? So we got a graduated mark. Actually, that's pretty good. So we actually have uh, a mark on there at seven eighths. And so let's, come on there. Give me trouble, the camera's running. So we're gonna, I'm gonna come down there a little bit thinner. So we're gonna go, we're gonna put that right on that seven eighths dot. And that's gonna compensate for the thickness of that blade. And so, yeah, so ideally I wanted two inches, but I can live with inch and seven eighths. It actually, you know what, it might be even better. And so, you know, what I find in woodworking is that, you know what really looks good is things are, that are non-standard. When you build a, when you build a, let's say you're gonna build a dining room table. Hint, upcoming episode. You're building a dining room table, and let's say you make your tabletop three quarters of an inch, which is perfectly fine. It, it'll work just fine. Lots of people do it. However, it doesn't make it very special. And what do I mean by that? Well, it doesn't make it very special because it's not unique. It's the same thickness everyone else uses. Same thing, it's in the same thickness you're gonna go buy at the store. You know, that's why it's so common. Same thing with inch and a half. Inch and a half, you know, of course, is the standard thickness for two by fours make our tabletop inch and a half, you know, and it can look like, oh, it's obviously someone just went and bought some lumber or, or even worse, you know, made this out of two by fours or something. But when you make things unique, interesting, I like to make things dimensions that you can't buy. Three inches is always really cool. 13 sixteenths or seven eighths instead of, instead of uh, three quarters. And you, mean, you might say, well, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, they're close enough, right? But it does. It does make a difference. It makes a huge difference. When you see it, you, you'd notice. It's just a little bit heavier, just a little bit different, just a little bit unique. And that's what's nice about the chainsaw mill is that you can, uh, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here, is, is that you can, uh, you can make it whatever you want to. You can, you can fulfill your wildest dream. So I'm happy to report that Mrs. Pants is doing very well. We've uh, cleaned her, dressed her wound and looked everything over. She's healing very nicely. We kept her pretty much immobilized yesterday or we just made her stay in the house and took her out on the leash, but she's doing well. I have to say that I was, I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed at some of the, some of the sissies. Can I, am I allowed to use that word anymore? Some of the sissies in the comments. Um, about this. I just don't understand what's happened to people, how people have gotten so squeamish and so soft and, and so uh, have such doubts of their own personal capabilities. It's, actually, this is the wrong saw. And what I'm referring to is the, you know, you, you, can't, you can't do that. Who are you to do that, you know? And, and uh, you're, you're going to me mess it up and all that. Uh, you know, I'm, I've had a lot of training in this stuff. I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, this is not something I'm doing for the first time. 
I've been uh, worked as a medic and lead medic, a fire department, paid fire fighter. I've got a lot of a lot of experience like this, you know, and and uh, I mean, if that's if that's the way if that's the way you are, I mean, if you're too paralyzed by fear to do anything, and I made a judgment call on that, and I looked at it, and had it been outside of my ability, I would have taken Miss Pants to the vet. But I deemed it within my ability, within my abilities, to safely perform this minor procedure, and and I, and I did it. I'm not afraid to to make those judgment calls, and and I mean, if you are, don't project. I guess I can't do anything about people who are. Just don't project your fear and and lack of a willing a willingness to try something and to do things, and lack of courage to do things. Um, on the rest of us. It's uh, sad, disappointing. I blocked a lot of people yesterday because I just can't, I can't, I can't abide that attitude. And I don't want that type of person anywhere near me or even in the comment section to even bring any, get, gets people, gets other people that are sitting on the fence, puts them in doubt, puts, makes them, pulls them down to their own pathetic level. So you, if you, if you wonder why you, your comments aren't showing up anymore, it's because there's a good dozen or two that are people that are gone. We won't be hearing from them anymore. I just don't, I just don't like that. Safety first, huh? Boy, miss, my wife, Mrs. Wrangler star, she sees me running a chainsaw without chaps on. You don't even want to know. A lot of that is, you know, you've got to make judgment calls. You've got to make judgment calls on when it's okay. There's not, just a, you can't, there's not just a blanket statement. You should always do this or you should always do that. You know, sometimes it depends. And I agree, running a chainsaw, cutting brush, and, and out in the woods, of course, absolutely. Um, but running a chainsaw mill is a very different thing. And... The, the ability of a chain to, to a chain, or a chainsaw mill to jump up off the timber and, and to and to get you that's pretty unlikely right uh, but uh, I don't know it's, uh, it seems that it seems that make being a safety sally has somehow mistakenly been equated to being wise if you are like safety 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 all the time um, people that think that that they're being smart and they're not being, sometimes, but they're not always being smart. Sometimes they're just being a safety sally. So we'll put our earplugs in and start making our cuts. So a uh, question always comes up, what saw do I use? I use my biggest saw, which is a 441 still. Probably going to be replaced this winter. I've got uh, over 10 years of, on it of hard use. Not a thing wrong with it but uh, I'm afraid it might develop problems. So I'm gonna be replacing that. Seems a little loose, is that okay? Yeah. So, uh, and I, so I can, this is a 441, and let's see, I better pay attention. The starting sequence on this is important. All right, you ready, Jack? Yeah. Ooh, that's heavy.
So I have to say this worked out really good. Remember what I were trying to figure, whoops, ouch, slivery. We're trying to figure uh, that right thickness and, and I, we did, you know, I mean, we came in, there's just a little bit of that chiseled out section for the knee brace there, I mean, but it's just maybe 16th of an inch or less. We can turn that to the bottom. That'll be, a, we got to plane some of this down anyway. So, I mean, it just couldn't have been better, but we ended up with uh, two pieces that are exactly the same size. Aren't those beautiful? Man, those are just, it's just nothing like milling your own lumber. The chainsaw mill, of course, is not in the most efficient way, but it's an economical way. It's an affordable way and it's a portable way. So I, I really like it. And for a hobbyist or just a, uh, like myself, it's, it's really great. It's a great product. I just think the world of it. So one more piece right there, and then we'll have our eight pieces. Four, but we'll cut it in half so there's two pieces in each board, and we can start on a project. So next, we've got to go to the steel yard. Well, we've got to plane all these down. We've got to do all the nice everything. We're going to do it all by hand, the old way, including all of the blacksmithing, um, as much as I can, as much as my abilities allow. So... All right, that's it. I'm going back to work. Enough of this camera. We'll see you guys on the next video. Beautiful Tuesday. What is it? August 2nd. Man, it's cold today. Had my wool shirt on. I'm wearing a down jacket right now. <laughs> it's supposed to, supposed to be hot this time of year, but it's not. But I, uh, I just love it. It's my favorite time of year. No, not my favorite time of year. This is my favorite weather to work in. I like it about... Oh, mid 60s or so a nice breeze a nice overcast it's always nice for filming you get that beautiful beautiful filtered light and oh, it's just nice just I, I like i like i like the cool weather i'm a, a northern man i do not like the heat spent a year or two in south florida and i was above all the most wretched of creatures i'll tell you that so what do we need to talk about man i'm just so grateful be alive today i just so uh, enjoyed um I, I enjoyed making this video and and it's fun to kind of mess around with the with the drone and there's just so many possibilities i i'm actually i'm not very good at using it and i'm really it, it's probably not working out really as well as i'd like to in the videos but it, those things will come sometimes you just got to get in there and one thing i've always tried to do is is to innovate and to try new things and and not don't want to become stagnant I want to, uh, yeah, the channel maybe is different than it used to be, but uh, so am I. A lot has happened in the eight years since I've been making videos. And, you know, I think change is good. I think it, it's per, it's really important to remember what, what where'd you come from and what was your initial, what, what was your intent and what is your purpose in life and why, why am I out here? I don't want to lose sight of that, but uh, new opportunities come along or, things to change or evolve I think that there's nothing wrong with taking advantage of those and it just makes it interesting I, I like to maybe try to run a channel where you you just never really know what you're gonna get and I know I always appreciate that I look at some of the old channels that when I first started up long time ago in the Wrangler Barn days that were really popular they were big channels and they were channels that I thought that would never I would never ever be able to attain that and I, it was funny, just the other day, I thought about a few of these channels, and I, I wonder whatever happened to those. Are they still around? So I clicked on over to them, and the thing that was interesting is that they, they didn't innovate, and they didn't change, and they're still making videos, and it's a very narrow content. It's, it's exactly the same thing they've been doing all along with no deviation, and the channels have long since plateaued, and, and it's just not that interesting anymore, and... And nothing personally against them, but I th just think it's important to, you got to be passionate about it. And when you do something for so long and you do the same thing year after year, it's hard to maintain that le level of passion and excitement. And I do, I do hear, you know, from some people, that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to watch anymore. I'm leaving because it's not like it used to be. And no, it's not. And it's not going to be. It's going to have to be what I'm into, what, what I am excited about and the direction I want to go. And those things change. So... That's about all I need. To, all I can say about that. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. One last thing. <laughs> I need. To, I, I've made Jack do a disclaimer on this, but so Jack up. Jack shot a video yesterday, and he, I gave him a task. Uh, he needed to go fence a, fix a broken fence rail in our log fence around the front yard. I gave him no instructions. I just kind of told him what to do and pointed him at it. And he shot a video on that, which he'll uh, will be up today. And I'm going to link link over to that 
look at the for the little icon in the top right. If you click on that, that'll open up a menu, and you can uh, go over there and watch that. But I, I'd recommend you watch it because he did a great <laughs> he did a, <laughs> he did a great job on that. But he did cut a corner severely. Uh, and the worst thing about it is he said that he learned that from me. And I'll tell you right now, and I made him annotate it. I certainly did not do that. But uh, I wasn't too hard on him. It's uh, I told him. Uh, the right way to do it and then i told him well you know it's it's i i like to see you thinking outside the box i like to see you thinking you, there was a problem and you came up with the solution you know it didn't paralyze you it didn't prevent you from finishing the job you got the job done and i gave him a big attaboy for that and then of course explained to him <laughs> how not to do it that time but uh great video so i, I i'd appreciate if you go over there and and watch that. I think you'll enjoy it. He puts a lot of work into this, and I think he's going to be. I just hope he's better than I. So I hope uh, someday I'll just be maybe holding a camera for him and and helping him with edit, and I'll just be an hourly man. And that would be fine with me. I'd be the proudest pop in the world. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.